Hello, welcome to this video on the Apache Spark internals. And today we are going to look at the physical planning. In the previous videos, we covered the very foundation of Spark, which is MapReduce. And then on top of it, the logical planning and the directed acyclic graph. And today we're going to look at how can we transform the directed acyclic graph into a physical execution plan, which our cluster scheduler knows how to execute on the cluster. All right, in the previous video we saw that we construct a directed acyclic graph from applying transformations on input RDDs and that these transformations are linked with dependencies. There are two types of dependencies. The first one is a narrow dependency, which basically means that we can leave the partitioning as it is. The second one is a wide, wide dependency. And here we know that um, a redistribution of data has to occur in the cluster. And all of that we can tell from the input data and the initial partitioning and the transformations we apply on top of it. We have also explored already that we can pipeline together narrow dependencies into single executions because we don't require a redistribution of data in the cluster, but rather we can <clears throat> execute narrow dependencies um, within one step on our cluster. And that's already the physical planning. And today we are going to look at what's the physical plan. Okay, so our logical plan, our directed acyclic graph consists of RDDs and dependencies and partitions. And here I have depicted one um, example of a directed acyclic graph, which is our um, logical plan. And here we have a couple of RDDs and we're applying transformations on top of them. And here we can see we have a void dependency because here a shuffle has to occur. And also here we have a, a white dependency because we can see that we need to reshuffle. So here is, for example, a join. And before the join, we can have um, or we need a grouped or co-grouped RDD, which means that um, both parent RDDs have the same um, partitioning scheme already. So all of the the keys which relate to one partition are already co-grouped into one partition. Now we want to transform this logical plan into a physical plan. And our cluster scheduler knows how to execute tasks on a cluster. That's very similar than uh, to what we saw in the MapReduce uh, video, um, where we execute, execute tasks as well, map and reduce tasks. And our cluster scheduler, as I said, knows how to uh, execute tasks on the cluster. So we need a way to transform this here into tasks. And a task is basically an unit of, of execution, which means it loads data, it applies a function to the data, and then it writes data, making it available for subsequent tasks. So a task is a unit of execution on our cluster. And that's why the cluster manager knows how to execute tasks. Okay, if we look at uh, the physical planning now, the key step is the pipelining, which I mentioned before. So what we do is we start from the very back of our um, logical plan, which is the result RDD, which is the final RDD on which we call an action because only the action triggers the planning and execution. So we start from the back. We know we have three output partitions. Then we go back um, for all the narrow dependencies we have. Um, we go along these narrow dependencies and we can see, okay, we, we can pipeline all of these four steps into one single, what we call stage. And that's a term that's probably familiar for, uh, to you, even if you only use Spark SQL, that's, which, which is a high level API. But um, even those Spark SQL um, queries and transformations come down to this. So we create one stage for each chain of narrow dependencies. So that would be the result stage, which is the stage that we have to evaluate to find the result. Now our result stage has still more dependencies. So we have to tra traverse one white dependency here where we cut the stage and here begins a new stage, which is a shuffle map stage, which is not a result stage. There are only two types of stages, which is the result stage. So something that we have to evaluate. And then we have shuffle map stages, which are basically parent stages, which need to be evaluated before. And here we start a new, new stage on this union RDD. 
um, and we traverse back all the narrow dependencies again to cut the stage and we can see okay we have only one parent shuffle map stage for our result stage and here where we cut the stage the result stage um, again is also a white dependency and here we only have one idd in our shuffle map stage which is which is the parent for our result stage what is also to mention is that the shuffles that people refer to are happening here between stages and only between stages and they happen implicitly like they do in map reduce we saw it before the reduce the reduced task would fetch the output data of the parent stage and that's an implicit shuffle and we i depicted it here on this slide um, so basically here we have a map task or we have many map tasks to evaluate this um, map stage here um, and then the the child stage would have to fetch the output data of this map operation and also of this map operation to have all the input data to execute this blue function because this this blue stage here it executes only one function and that's actually what we refer to when we say um, whole whole stage code generation we basically take all of this logic which um, is implemented or is required by these transformation transformations within this result stage and combine them into one single function and here it's, it becomes clear also the the relation back to MapReduce because here we can really see that the physical planning and also the logical planning only lead to a optimized chain of map and reduced tasks which we can finally schedule on the cluster. All right, that's been a short one, but a very interesting one, I think. And um, we can see here how all the pieces fall into place, um, how Spark executes workload. So that's very the basics of Spark internals but we really understand what's happening and I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it please subscribe to this channel it helps me and leave some comments um, if you have questions or would like to understand something else and I hope to see you next time for the next video until then bye bye